Hi guys, the Metal Maniac back again, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a review of the live album Tales from the Crypt by Halloween. Um, this uh, live album was recorded in 1985, but uh, released in 2012. Um, now, before I get into the songs, I'm going to name off the band members really quick, but I have to get one of the other albums by them because for some reason there are no band member credits on here. Alright, uh, Brian Thomas on vocals, Rick Craig on guitar, George Neal on bass, and Bill Wright, uh, Bill Wright on, uh, drums. Um, now, this particular release, um, since it was recorded, what, 85? Yeah, 85. Since it was recorded in 85, it has pretty much the same lineup as the, as their first album, Don't Metal for Evil and uh, Victims of the Night. So, uh, yeah, pretty much the uh, classic lineup of this band. Anyway, so the live album first starts off with sort of like an intro. Like, um, it's basically like uh, uh, someone, uh, some announcer, or like uh, um, uh, sort of like, you know, doing the, the, like some kind of like spoken word intro for the band. Um, Anyway, so after the intro, uh, the first song on here is What a Nice Place. Um, really great live version um, for the second half. Uh, the first half, the audio is pretty muffled. But thankfully, uh, uh, midway through that song, the audio sort of like uh, e evens out again. And uh, yeah, um, great live song, even if the first like minute or two the audio isn't that good for some reason um anyway the next song is a live version of children of the witches great song uh also love this live version um yeah very very good um the next song is a song um okay so there are quite a few songs uh these live songs recorded on here that uh there are quite a few that were never featured on any studio album. Um, but yeah, the next song is called The Right to Rock. Again, men, um, uh, quite a few of these songs never made it to a live album. Uh, the Right to Rock is just sort of, eh. It's, it's okay, I guess. Um, Bitten by Fear is also just okay. Again, another one that never made it to a studio album. Uh, Tonight on Yours is a ballad-type song. Uh, again, just okay. Um, and then side two starts with Victims of the Night, the uh, title track of their third album. Uh, yeah, very, very good. Um, also, uh, with the Victims of the Night, this live version, um, it's really cool. So it's, it, it, um, Brian Thomas does a little spoken word sort of intro before the song actually starts. Um, it, it's kind of odd because, like, the spoken word intro is pretty much just, uh, Talking instead of singing uh, the uh, first verse of the actual song, so yeah, I don't know. Very odd intro, but the, the live song is, is really good. Um, the next one is uh, "To Fight the Beast," another classic, uh, another one off their first album. Uh, very, very good. And then, of course, the title track of their first album, uh, live version, "Don't Middle with Evil," amazing. Um, and then it goes to another, you know song that was never featured on their studio albums, and that's In Love Again. Again, just it's just okay. Um, and then Side 2 ends with uh, another one that was never on their uh, studio albums, and that was uh, a song called Cry Out, which is actually, I'd say, the best of their, uh, of the songs that, you know, were only featured live. Um, and then Side 3 starts with, you know, another classic, Scared to Death. Uh, which, of course, was the intro song to uh, the uh, um, first album, Don't Metal with Evil. Very, very good. Um, then the next song is called I Scream. Eh, li like with most of the others that weren't featured on the studio version, it's just okay. Uh, again, another one that I kind of understand why it was never featured on the studio album, because it's, you know, again, just okay. Uh, then there's a live version of Candles, which is really, really cool. Uh, again, Candles is my... Arguably, first or second favorite song by this band. Again, night the the song "Nightmares and Can 
uh, the songs Nightmares and Candles, um, very close tie between um, my favorite and second favorite between the two. Anyway, but yeah, a live version of Candles is always good to hear. Um, next up, Tales from the Crypt, again another classic from their first album, very very good. Uh, then side three ends with the song Rest in Peace, uh, one of my favorites from Victims of the Night. Um, and then side four starts off with the song Rats and Rock Dogs. Again, another song that wasn't featured on their studio albums, and again, just okay. Um, and then it goes into another classic, Justice for All. Um, uh, uh, I'd say, yeah, it's my favorite ballad by this band. Um, of course, No Place is another great ballad, but Justice for All is probably my favorite um, ballad this, this band has done. Um, but yeah, live version of Justice for All is great. Um, then it goes into this really cool drum solo, but the drum solo goes on for a bit too long. Like, it, it, it's cool, don't get me wrong. The drum solo sounds really cool, but it goes on for a bit too long. Like, I think it's over, like, one or two minutes long, and it's just sort of like, it's just like, okay, already just get to the next song. Um, and then the second to last song is called You Can't Kill the Strong, another one which is just okay, and another one which was never featured on any of their studio albums. And then the live album uh, ends with the song Trick or Treat, uh, another great one. Alright, so my final thoughts before my verdict. Um, this is a mixed bag. There's some really good songs and then there's just some okay songs. Um, the okay songs are pretty much almost all of the ones that, you know, weren't featured in a studio album. Uh, except for Cry Out. Cry Out, even though it was uh, with those, it's still a good song. It's, it's uh, again, the only good song from uh, those batches of songs. Um, also, uh, something I've noticed is that there's quite a few live songs on here from Victims of the Night. Which, Victims of the Night was recorded in 86, a year after this and a year after their first album. So, I guess, like, quite a lot of their songs from Victims of the Night was, were actually older than the recording of the album itself. So, there were quite a few songs that were on that album that are, you know, a lot older than I actually thought. Um, and Candles, again, I thought it was recorded in 86, because that's, again, that's when the Victims of the Night was recorded. But apparently, again, a lot of those songs, you know, along with Candles, which, again, didn't really make it on the album, unfortunately... But, uh, a lot of, I guess a lot of the songs that were on Victims of the Night were recorded, or at least the live versions, were, or they were playing them live way before. Um, so that's interesting. Um, also, the audio quality on this album, uh, for the most part, it's very, very good. Although, like I said, the first half of uh, What a Nice Place, the audio quality is kind of muffled. Um, that pops up from time to time on the album, on this live album, not too much, but, you know, once in a while, but it doesn't ruin the album for me. Um, also, uh, it says on the back here, uh, radio broadcast live from Harpo's Detroit, February 8th, uh, 1985. Um, yeah, it, it, it's very odd because... Uh, you think, oh, it's a live radio broadcast, that just means, you know, they're broadcasting, uh, their songs from their studio albums or whatever, or their first album, uh, broadcasting live on the radio, that kind of live, but no. Um, apparently, this entire live show was actually broadcast on the radio, because multiple times, uh, uh in between songs, uh, br uh, Brian Thomas, uh, references that, yes, this, uh, whole live show is being recorded, uh, 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 to, you know, be played live on the radio. So I guess, yeah, it, 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 it's very odd. I've never heard of a, 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 a band performing a live show where the a recording of it was played live on the radio. Usually they record live shows to make li to, uh, put, uh, to create live albums. Uh, um, well, they did with this, but it, it's just kind of odd. Um, but, yeah. Also, um, another thing to mention... I cannot find any, 
any information on this live album whatsoever. Not on Wikipedia, and not on the Metal Archives. So, I literally don't know much about this album other than, you know, it was recorded in 85, and according to the copyright date, was was uh, released in 2012. Um, also, but yeah, and like, it's like, oh, maybe... Uh, maybe you guys are thinking, oh, well, maybe if it's a bootleg, it wouldn't be, you know, uh, documented. Which is not true, considering that, at least on the Middle Archives, uh, even the bootleg, uh, even uh, bootleg releases of bands is, you know, are documented. But I can't find any information on this live album for some reason. Uh, and if anyone watching this video does have any information on this live album, please share in the comments below, because I'd like to know more about this release. Um, anyway, now, uh, oh, the artwork. I almost forgot about the artwork. The artwork is decent. It definitely looks a little too CGI-ish. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, again, it's decent. I, I like the, uh, uh, graveyard, uh, uh, abandoned graveyard in the middle of the night thing with a, sort of like a zombie right there. Um, there's even some artwork on the back as well. Anyway, uh, my rating for this live album, I'm going to say mm, 7.8. Um, when this live album is good, it's really, really good. Uh, but there is some filler tracks, like I said. There's a lot that, a lot of songs, a couple of songs on here that weren't on their live albums. Uh, again, they're just okay, so I understand why they didn't survive past, you know, the, li the early live shows. Um, but yeah, uh, for the most part, really good live album. Um, definitely highly recommended, um, definitely get this if you could track it down, um, but yeah. So, that's it for this video, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.